It starts like any other day, a blank screen, a to-do list, and too much caffeine in my bloodstream. Before jumping in, I clean my keyboard, something oddly therapeutic about it, like clearing my mind with every keycap. Mentally preparing to code, sometimes that takes longer than coding itself. I have to go through some of the tasks that I have to do, maybe conduct stand-ups at times. But yeah, it's all there. And boom, Wi-Fi betrays me. Zero Mbps, a developer's worst nightmare right after merge conflicts. Time to pivot. I move to another room, new vibes, same bug. I have just moved to another router, which is in my parents' house, is an added redundancy to my existing router in this apartment, but uh, helps at time. I will try to thrive with this Wi-Fi connection right now, go over some of the PRs that I was meant to review, and then maybe I will get lucky and be able to code. Now the real dev fuel, oats, quick, clean, and kind to my macros. Oats has been an amazing source of nutrition for me, cheap, fast, and packed with complex carbs. They give me slow releasing energy through long focus sessions. I generally take like half up a cup of rolled oats and you know, a cup scoop of protein here and there. So I take unsweetened, we isolate, and I also use almond milk, unsweetened, it's low calorie and lactose free and honestly my gut appreciates it more than regular milk. Uh, scoop of whey protein in there to bump up the protein. It helps with muscle recovery after workouts and also keeps me full during long meetings where I forget to eat. And then I stir it all together. The whole meal takes under 5 minutes and hits every macro, protein, carbs and fiber and honestly it fuels both my workouts and my deep work blocks. If you're a dev trying to eat cleaner without the meal prep stress, start with this. It's unreasonably effective. Most people wait for winter to pick up the racket, but for me and my friends, uh, badminton isn't seasonable, it's non-negotiable. We play year-round, no matter the weather or workload. It's fast, reactive, and just chaotic enough to shake off a day full of debugging and meetings. And here's the cool part. Studies show racket sports like badminton are incredibly good for you. One large study in the British Journal of Sports Medicine found that playing racket sports reduced all-cause mortality by over 47%. That's huge, right? That's uh, not an insignificant number. Why? Because it's not just cardio. It improves agility, coordination, decision-making, and social connection all at once. For me, it's more than a workout. It's a reset button for my mind and a long-term investment in staying sharp, both physically and mentally. Cool. So now we are in that part of the video where I uh, write a data structure from scratch in Python. So here I'm trying out a sorted array and uh, the goal for me to write a sorted array was one, because I'm just brushing up my data structure and algorithms and also trying to improve myself in Python by uh, creating these uh, data structures from scratch. These are kind of ADTs, abstract data types and data structures. And the idea over here is to create a sorted array where uh, during input, the array is handled in such a way that it is sorted. And we are going to not use a Python list right now uh, because Python is a dynamic array, so it will beat the purpose and it is not sorted also during insertion. Uh, so we are using the array module from the array library. What it requires is a max size, so it would bound the array size. And it also requires a type code. So here type code L means it ex accepts long values uh, within the container. And we have also specified a private variable uh, called size, which will track the size of the array. And I have initialized it to zero. So yeah, we will implement these member functions for this sorted array class, which will be search, insert, and the delete operations. So let's go ahead and implement our insert operation. The main motive of the insert uh, method is to make sure that we always insert a number at the right location. So if you guys know, if we create the array first and then sort it, our uh, array would always require sorting before we can um, fetch anything back from the array or if we require things to be arranged in a certain manner, that would be like n log n, uh, time complexity. Uh, but here, uh, we're trying to do, we're trying to make sure that it is always 
uh, it is checked during insertion. So if the number to be inserted is greater than the last number which was inserted, then we insert at that position. Otherwise, we take the value and start decrementing from the end and put it in the correct position. So yeah, I mean, we start from the back and that allows us to do that. So it's mostly an, o of an operation at worst case uh, during insertion. So idea in this algorithm to make sure that it is always sorted is to check the last number which was inserted. In order to do that, we iterate from the back of the array. So let's assume that we have one and three which are already present in the array and we want to insert two. Then the thing that we'll have to do is first check the last number which is three. So two is not greater than three. So as a result, we cannot put it in the third index of the array. So we'll have to shift positions, right? So two has to come between one and three. So that's the idea that we're gonna follow here. In the same scenario, if the number was four, then it would just automatically sit at the third position. So what we're trying to do over here is iterate from the back of the array. We take cell.size as a starting index and try to iterate back or decrement the pointer until we reach the starting index. We check if the value to be inserted is greater than the number which was present at the end if it is then we insert the number right there and that is the correct index if not we will have to take a step back and move towards the left until we reach the correct number so yep that's what we're trying to do over here so this state this this uh, statement that we have written cell dot array i is equal to cell dot array i minus one is pushing the last value out by one index so in the previous example, which we were saying, I have to insert two between one and three. Uh, so what we'll have to do is, since I know the max size of the array and I know exactly how many indices there are, I have to take the number three and put it in the third position. Only then I would be able to open up a slot for two to be inserted. That is exactly what we're doing over here. When we see that inside the else condition, we have done a cell dot array i is equal to cell dot array i minus one. So yeah, so that is how we are making space for the array and as the loop continues in the next iteration when then we see that number two is greater than number one we insert it at that position if that's not the case that means the number needs to be inserted at the first location because uh, if it comes out of the loop unaffected it literally means that it's the smallest value to be inserted into the array and as a result of which we do a cell dot underscore array so zero is equal to x and we should also have to increase the size of the array by one let's test this method out once and see if the insertion is happening correctly so creating an array with a max size of 10 and then let's start go ahead and start inserting numbers into the array so we start with array dot insert 5 and then we have array dot insert 6 we'll try to insert some random numbers and see if they end up in the correct place the idea is that when we print the array back it needs to be sorted yep so when you print it we see that it is instead in, in fact it is a sorted array moving on let's implement our search method ideally we wouldn't want to do linear search here although since the array is sorted uh, linear search anyways would take o of n time i am sure you guys all, all already know that we can do better by using binary search as in every iteration of binary search we would be splitting the array in half and as a result of which i will be having a time complexity of log of n which is uh, much smaller than having a linear time complexity so yeah that's what we're going to implement here So we quickly do a size check, see if the size of the array is one. If it is, then we check if the first number is the number which is intended to, to be searched. And if that's true, then we return a zero because that is the first index of the array. If not, then we raise a value error stating that the data is not present in that array. Once that's done, we move forward with the other conditions. This is exactly where things start getting interesting. This is the main crux of the binary search implementation. So what we'll do is we'll, since the search API is public, we won't mention what search we're using. Instead, we will create a private endpoint called 
my bad, private function called underscore binary search, which we will invoke in the search method. So binary search would take low, high, which are the lowest and the highest indices of the split of the array in which we want to do the search. The first thing that we'll have to do is find the midpoint of the array. And we're doing that by uh, adding up low and high and dividing it by two. We are typecasting it using int in order to get the integer index value. And then we are going to check if where does x um, belong. So if x is mid, then that's hip hip hooray for us. We have found the number on the, f on the go. And if not, we'll have to compare x with the mid value. If it is lesser than mid, then it will be searched in the array uh, where all the numbers are lesser than the mid value. And if that's not the case, then it will be searched in the array where, or I should say the slice of the array where all the numbers are greater than that mid value in that particular iteration or uh, call like recursive call of the binary function in order to search the latter part of the array we recursively call the bin search function and for the lower value we do a mid plus one for the highest value which is the higher index we pass size of the array itself we pass the array as the third variable and we also pass the data to be searched for i don't think we need to pass array because it is member instance of this class or I should say a member variable of this class so we can directly use cellular underscore array actually um, but we'll get back to that later and if uh, here also if x is less than mid and that's exactly what we're doing we are passing zero as the lower index and mid which is the highest index so this is will again be called recursively and we'll be doing a binary search in the lower half of the array yeah, I think we did a small mistake here. Uh, uh, we are also updating cell.array there, yeah. So let's see if it is able to search or not. Yeah, so we try looking for numbers 5 and 45, which are already present in the array. Yeah, search seems to be working nicely uh, because I am looking for the number 5, which is present in index 3rd. And then I'm looking for the number 45, which is again present in index 6. So I think search works as expected. Now let's go ahead and implement our last function, which is the delete function. And this will help us remove items from the array easily. So the parameters to the delete function is going to be the same. We will have to pass the number which needs to be deleted. The idea is that we will look for the number in the correct location and then uh, remove it from the array, making sure that the array still maintains its uh, sorted nature. So we'll quickly look at the target index where this value is present. So we can simply call the search uh, function with the number in concern. And this should return the target index to us if cell.search raises an exception by any chance. It means that the number is not present in the array and we cannot delete it. Hence, we'll uh, raise another exception saying that uh, array number cannot be deleted. Mind you, guys, I'm implementing this array in a manner to also show how we can utilize object-oriented programming classes in Python in order to really uh, structure problem statements where the data structure uh, is the hero. And in most production utilities, we have to write these containers which are going to hold data and we have to work um, on top of the data so writing data structures from scratch in python is actually a pretty interesting thing which helps us learn low level design um, in a very neat manner moving back to our delete function uh, what we're trying to do is uh, we'll start from the index which needs to be deleted and we'll move back all elements by one index so let's say we have one two three four in the array and we want to delete three so what we'll do is we will start from three we will swap the position 
of three or four or rather I should say we will uh, just take four and put it in the position of three and we'll do it for the rest of the numbers present in the array and we'll also reduce size by one as a result of which the number to be deleted would be removed from the array and mm, everything beyond the last number would be zero so yeah that's what's gonna happen we won't have any duplicate numbers in the array present let's go ahead and try to delete a number and see what it looks like in practice let's go ahead and delete three and uh, see if in fact it was deleted from the array we'll print the array once again after deletion and yeah it is in fact seems to be working three is deleted we don't have three anymore cool guys thank you for watching this video i hope you guys enjoyed it day in life with the things that i do and also a little bit of programming so see you guys in the next video